Thank you very much. Be before I, I say next slide, I would like to say thank you very much for the for the invitation. It's um it's an honor for me and a, and a great pleasure to to share some uh, time with you this morning and to share some of the reflections that collectively and, and of course not only me put together in the thematic uh, paper that was shared with the with the participants. I hope that um, this this seminar will contribute to achieve the aims, the complementary aims that both uh, Cornelia and, and Julian and previously, previously the director uh, explained. So maybe Giovanni, uh, thank you again for the invitation. We can move on with the presentation. So at, it has already been said, Public financial support, it's it's an important uh, and can be an important ally, a partner for the achievement of the social economy goals and particularly to support the goals and the activities of social economy entities. Use the date controls the granting of public fund, funds by the member states, by public authorities of the member states with a view to preventing the distortion of competition. But at the same time, the EU stated rules are now, even before further um, flexibilization, as it was mentioned by Julian, already now allow for the granting of public financial support to social economy entities. And the goal of this presentation will be to explain the fundamentals of the system and how the system can also support the achievement of the goals of the social economy. And yet, as uh, Cornelia explained, and as it is clear from the staff working document annexed to the social economy action plan, it seems that uh, there is a, a sense, a perception that public authorities don't make the most of these stated possibilities. This was um, conveyed by by many of the stakeholders involved in the in the revision of the state of the social economy action plan so the aim of the workshop as mentioned is to provide participants with a strong basis of this yes a little bit complex system hopefully less complex after today if we manage and then to to try to explain how the system works and how the system can also support the social economy next slide please So we will be talking about state aid, so it might be worth trying to clarify what is state aid in the first place. So state aid is a, it's a legal concept. It's included in the treaties in Article 107, Paragraph 1, and the treaty it provides for the criteria that has to be met, but it doesn't really define what is state aid. State aid can be defined as a financial transfer of public resources that benefit selectively an undertaking or a group of undertaking essentially companies or social economic entities for this matter, and that is capable of distorting competition and trade. There are four main elements. It's actually five, but two of them can be analyzed together. Four main elements that have to be taken into account. The, the public intervention, the intervention by public authorities must be provided through some public resources. So there must be some sort of impact on the public budget, being through a, a positive subsidy like a grant or being by mitigating the charges that usually borne that are, that are usually borne by undertakings like a tax exemption or a social security exemption that from the perspective of the effects in the undertaking is very similar to a grant. If you don't have to pay a million euros in taxes, it's very similar to receiving a grant of one million euros. The second um, element is that the public intervention must confer on the beneficiary, on the counterparts of the public authorities, a benefit, an advantage. So the situation of the undertaking must be better off after the public intervention. That is usually clear when an undertaking, a company, a social economic enterprise receives uh, a grant uh, of, let's say, a million euros again. But it might not be so clear in in other cases, 
like for instance if a public uh, or a private company buys a, a plot of land from the government is there an advantage there well we don't know it will depend on the price it will depend on the conditions it will depend on the on the market terms whether they are fulfilled or not thirdly the advantage must be selective an advantage that is granted to everyone is no longer an advantage an advantage for being distortive has to be selective it must favor some companies but not all the companies an example of a general measure would be usually the corporate tax rate in a given country let's say it's 30 percent for everybody that's not selective because everybody has to pay the same However, if it's 30% for everybody, but 20% for companies placed in a certain region, then those companies are selectively identified as beneficiaries of state aid. And finally, there are two requirements that are usually analyzed together. The public benefit or the publicly financed benefit provided on a selective basis must be able, must be liable to distort competition and trade. And there is a presumption. Any artificial distortion of competition, any artificial grant or benefit received by a company which is competing with others in a certain market distorts competition and trade. That's a legal presumption that has been in the case law for, for, for decades and which makes sense also if we think on how the system of state aid works in the EU. State aid must be analyzed ex ante before putting into effect so we don't need to wait for the effects of the measure in order to know whether something is state aid or not it, it is enough that there is a potential of distortion or potential distortion of competition or of trade and importantly and more so i would say in this context we have to keep in mind that the conditions of article 107 paragraph one the four five conditions i just mentioned will only provide state aid if the beneficiary is an undertaking under EU law. An undertaking is any entity, regardless of its legal form and regardless of the objective it pursues, that competes, uh, pro uh, carries out an economic activity, therefore sells goods or services in a given market. And we will get back to that uh, later on. So what are the main rules of the system? I just described Paragraph one of Article 107. Paragraph two and three of the same article provide exemptions, justifications for the granting of a state aid. There are many. And because the drafters of the treaties understood that the whole prohibition of state aid, as it was included in the previous treaty, in the Steel and Community Treaty, there was a, a, an absolute prohibition, and it didn't work because there are reasons that justify the granting of subsidies. Then Article 108 provides the procedural arrangement, provides for the ex ante and exposed control of state aid by both the Commission and national courts. And Article 106 of the TFEU, of the Treaty on the Function of the European Union, is very relevant for our purposes as it relates to services of general economic interest. In addition to these main treaty provisions, what we call in legal terms primary law, there are also provisions of secondary law, therefore of state aid legislation. Exemption to the notification obligation, the minimis regulation, service of general economic interest regulation, etc. In a nutshell, according to the treaty, every state aid must be notified to the European Commission. However, nowadays, 97% of all new aid is not notified to the European Commission. So the exception that you have here in this box has become in a way the rule in the sense that most state aid can be granted by public authorities to let's say social economic entities without the need to notify to the European Commission provided and this is strong provided provided that all the criteria of these regulations really all the substantive and the procedural are are met in that case the Commission doesn't need to analyze case by case all measures that can be state aid. The Commission has already done that and has said that given some conditions, state aid can be granted without notification. Next slide, please. So 
According to the treaties, it is for the Commission to carry out a balancing test between the negative effects of a certain state aid. As a beneficiary of a state aid, we only see positive effects. If I receive a grant in order to carry out uh, a project which has a social impact, what's wrong with that? The negative effect has to do with my competitors, usually, with the distortion of competition and trade. The Commission understand that. The Commission that understand that there is some negative effect in every subsidy, in every state aid granted. However, the Commission balances that against the positive effects of a certain measure. Positive effect for the development of certain economic activities or areas. Positive effects in terms of a very low distortion of competition, a very low distortion of trade, and um, more importantly for our purposes, the positive effect must be the realization of one of the social economy uh, goals. Uh, next slide. We'll try to, to go quickly so that we can have more time for discussion if there are questions. So let's now move to the possibilities for public financing for the social economy that the current legal system uh, of legal rules of um, state control or the state discipline allows. There are many of them. As mentioned before, more than 90% of all new aid is exempted from notification. So public authorities can grant the, the funds to the beneficiaries without asking the European Commission. There are main four main ways of doing so. The first one is what we call the minimis aid. So every undertaking in the European Union can receive up to 200,000 euros over a three years period without notifying the European Commission. That's considered allowed. And the reason being that the European Commission considers in its economic discretion that there is no significant distortion of competition and trade in that case. The second possibility, well, in the minimis, I should also mention that the minimis state aid also applies to services of general economic interest. We usually refer to them as public services. So a compensation, a public compensation to a public service of up to 500,000 euros over uh, a certain period does not also restore competition and trade and can be granted without notification. Secondly, let's move to the block exemption regulations. What we call the General Block Exemption Regulation or GBER allows for the granting of a state aid without notification for a number of objectives. And many of them are related to social economic social economic goals, such as investment aid to small and medium-sized enterprises, access to finance or risk finance aid schemes in favor of SMEs, aid for startups, or aid for the compensation of the extra cost of hiring um, disadvantaged workers or persons with uh, disabilities. Those measures can be uh, put in place without notifying to the European Commission, without any further legal requirement. It's relatively straightforward to do it. But as, as Julian very importantly said, this is a possibility. It is not compulsory for member states to do it, and not all member states can do it. If I can use a, a metaphor here, uh, to eat caviar is allowed, but not everyone can afford it. So all the measures that are in the block exemption regulations, all the measures that are a possibility, but not every single region can do it. But also, as importantly mentioned by Julian, the next generation funds and other numbers of EU funds partly compensate for the differences in budget between member states, and it's really also contributing to have social cohesion in the in the EU. So, thirdly, we have the service of general economic interest. What is a service of general economic interest? This is very important because it's actually for the member states to define it. So for the public authorities to define what is a public service in their territory, which might not be the same in other public, in other territories or in other member states. Examples recognized as such by the European Commission includes social housing and hospitals, access to and reintegration into the labor market, social inclusion of vulnerable groups or other similar that pursue social aims. In this case, the 
compensation for the provision of these services, let's say the compensation given to a social enterprise or a social entity for the provision of these public services is not state aid, or in other words, it is state aid, but it's considered justified under Article 106, Paragraph 2, under the Service of General Economic Interest, and there is a commission decision which works pretty much like a block exemption regulation that allows this in excess of 500,000 euros, because if it is less than that, you can use the uh, Service of General Economic Interest de minimis um, decision. So, in the case of some services that are particularly uh, costly because of their dimension or because of the particularities of the service, those that are not covered by the what we call the Service of General Economic Indecision can be covered by the Service of General Economic Interest framework. In that case, the provision of compensation must be notified to the Commission and the Commission will study it and eventually approve it if it complies with all the criteria. And finally, there are cases in which a certain aid is not covered by, a, by an exempting regulation or by a de minimis regulation. In that case, according to the treaty, we have to notify to the European Commission and wait for the Commission's approval. The Commission will carry out its analysis and has limited its discretion by publishing a number of soft law instruments guidelines that explain how the Commission carries out this analysis. And in those guideline, guidelines, you can also find many references to social economy provisions, such as risk finance or others that can be granted. Can we move to the next slides, please? And so we are going to see some examples related, which are included in the thematic um, report, which are included to three different possibilities. Eight measures notified to the European Commission that the Commission approved. Secondly, social services that, has been that have been considered services of general economic interest and therefore approved. And thirdly, public support measures that are not state aid under the current rules. This next slide. Let's start with some state aid measures that met all the criteria for state aid and were notified to the European Commission. One of them had to do with the setting up of what the UK called the big society, society capital, which is essentially a financial instrument where the UK invested 400 million pounds at the, at the time, this was 2011, they started in 2012, and it's still going on and where many uh, partners from banks, commercial banks and others have also invested in this financial instrument, which has at its aims, its aim, the favoring of the channeling of finance towards social economy uh, enterprises and for social uh, economy uh, goals. So that's an example of an instrument that provides advantages to social economy entities, but those advantages are justified because of the goals pursued by the social economy entities. This had to be notified the European Commission because it exceeded the provisions of the risk finance guideline that the Commission had published uh, at the time, because the measures are not restricted to small and medium-sized enterprises. It can be a big cooperative, it can be a big enterprise with social aims. Another example is state aid notified by Sweden recently, another 400 million euros, to compensate companies that employ disadvantaged workers, which can be immigrants or long-term unemployed. The workers receive a salary which is partly covered by public money, so the employers actually pay less than the minimum wage, that's the advantage for the employers, but the employees don't get less than the minimum wage. The difference between the minimum wage and the what the employers paid is covered by this measure. It's a, it's a kind of a clever measure that favors both employers and, and employees, and it mainly benefited small and medium-sized enterprises. The European Commission analyzed it and declared it justified under Article 106, 7 paragraph 3, so essentially the main compatibility provision. Next slide, please. 
let's have a look at other examples. In this case, measures that amount to state aid, but that have been considered as compensation for the provision of services of general economic interest in different domains. The first one has to do with the compensation provided by the Brussels region to the hospitals operating in this area. It started with a private complaint. There, were a, there was a first decision and then a second decision ratified by the EU court where the commission essentially found that the compensation granted by the public authorities of Brussels to companies, uh, to these uh, hospitals, was state aid but was justified as a compensation for a service of general economic interest. And the commission used for that because the amount was very high, both the, the SGEI decision and the SGEI framework. Secondly, there is aid for social housing. Social housing has been accepted as a right or a proper, a correct service, public service. So to have social houses in a given country, there are some countries like the Netherlands with a, with a strong tradition for social housing that's justified and allowed by the European uh, Commission under the provision of, under the service of general economic interest exception. The Commission introduced a limitation. It has to really favor disadvantaged communities. It cannot be for everyone. Otherwise, it could not be justified as social housing. But the, there was some leeway for the national authorities to define this. And I would like to add that there are also other decisions where the European Commission has accepted as compatible aid, not only as a service of general economic interest, but just as compatible aid, the granting of aid for social housing. There are two recent examples, one of Sweden, one of um, Ireland. Third example, aid for an association of deaf uh, people. There was a 1 million euro grant to create and operate a center for the autonomy of deaf people in, in Italy, and the measure was justified as an exception for uh, the compensation for a public service. And in this case, the public service was uh, considered the services that were carried out by this entity, which was a social economy entity. And finally, aid for the integration of people with disabilities. Also in Sweden, Shanghai company, public company receive aid to provide sheltered employment. And this was justified under the service of general economic interest provision. Next slide, please. And there are also some instances, and with this I conclude, I think we have five minutes late, um, left, but I think we will conclude uh, before that. There are some instances where the public measures don't amount to state aid because one of the five, criteria of the notion of state aid, including that of undertaking, is not met. For instance, in the Slovak Republic, there were two companies that were actually private companies providing health insurance services, but they provided those services under the public mandate, which was based on solidarity and not on capitalization. In other words, the public it was a public system not relating the the health of the patient with the money that the provider receives. So it was publicly funded in order to cover everyone as most public health system in the member states. In that case, the monies received by this private operator was considered as not state aid because the public operators were not undertaken. They were not companies under EU law. Even though they were private, they were not companies because they were not providing an economic activity. There are also instances where you have social economic entities like um, Santa Casa de Misericordia de Tomar, which operates purely in a local market with no customers from other member states, not even from other regions, and from with no investors from other member states. In that case, there is no distortion of EU trade. There was really is this happens also with museums, swimming pools, this kind of public funding of very local. In infrastructure usually does not distort uh, trade or competition. And there are also instances where there is no selective advantage. Either there is no advantage because the, the public intervention is conducted in market terms, like in, in the case of Italy with private and public uh, 
undertakings, it was found by the European Commission that there was no advantage to private operators. And if there was, it was not selective because it, they were all treated equally. Similarly, an Irish risk equalization scheme related to healthcare was also considered as not a state aid because there was no advantage for the provider, in this case, applying the so-called Altmark criteria. And finally, a, there is an interesting judgment by the Court of Justice where the court differentiates between, or distinguishes between commercial companies and social cooperatives. And the court found in that case and under the particular features of that, of that case, which might not be uh, extrapolable to, to other cases, but in that case, the court found that cooperatives were not in the similar situation as commercial companies, and therefore a measure favoring cooperative was not state aid because it was not selective, because cooperatives were a reference framework in themselves. They were not to be compared with commercial companies in that particular case, so it was justified by the logic of the system to have a different treatment. Next slide, please. So to, to conclude, the current stated rules open up significant opportunities for funding. I think they can be perceived as partners or allies in the pursuit of social economy uh, goals by the member states. They include different types of possibilities from the absence of the existence of aid to the minimis aid, block exempted aid or aid as compensation for the provision of services of general economic interest. They only apply, stated rules only apply if all the criteria of Article 107, Paragraph 1 are met, including the notion of undertaking. And we believe, uh, all of us, I think I'm not speaking only for myself, that it is very important to be familiar with it, with with this with this regulation because there are many possibilities that can be that can be um, used for granting support to the social economy uh, entities thank you very much